the, the, the proposed parastatal, I mean privatization of 11 parastatals is now an issue in court. Uh, Raila Odinga stating that uh, it would require a referendum, is my understanding, uh -huh. to privatize them yeah. on account of, uh, let me see, on account of, uh, where is that, where is that, where is that? So for several reasons. So for example, he says uh, it arrogates, <laughs> legalese, some legalese there, arrogates near absolute powers to the cabinet secretary and by extension the executive in the privatization of sovereign assets and further elevates subjective economic pr uh, perspectives of privatization above entrenched and non-derogable values and principles of governance under uh, the constitution. He also states, so apart from this arrogating near absolute power, uh, the case he also makes is that these parastatals are strategic of strategic importance uh, to the country, your thoughts. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Olive. Uh, the 11 parastatals, particularly KICC, which is, uh, quote, unquote, it is the, it's a landmark, it's a monument, it's a historic and a beautiful uh, building in our city. Uh, some people would feel like some of these things are not merely decisions that are made out of the blues and therefore just like Baba has opined and many have opined including Kenyans uh, there was a bit of a bloodness in terms of how they came about the 11 parastatals who did they consult how did they earmark and choose the 11 and not any other uh, for whose interest is it for the interest of Kenyans Kenyans there are more questions than answers really is it that they are loss making is it that they will do better when they're in the hands of the private sector? So the very fact that it was done hurriedly and in the dark is what is raising more questions than answers. And really, it is not too far from the truth when we also say that uh, this very government has constantly shown Kenyans that they cannot be trusted. So every day, the, de the trust deficit between the Kenyans and this government is growing wider and wider and larger. And therefore, this is just another one of their ploys to take away do uh, government institutions that are meant to, to serve Kenyans and give it to the private sector. All right, so the National Treasury did publish the schedule, which provides an explanation as to why these 11. So, but as I pull that up, uh, Mushimiwa Denita Gatti, uh, you sat in the August House. You know, what would you have to say to those sitting there now in terms of uh, uh, this? I, I know MPs don't necessarily have to approve, right, yes. the privatization process. The objective being to uh, to do away with the bureaucracy uh, that the president said. So I think one parastatal in 15 years. Uh, privatized. Uh, do you think there's a, there's a balance that can be achieved between uh, involvement of the people's representatives, uh, not necessarily maybe through a referendum, but involvement of the people, uh, and also uh, eliminating bureaucracy in uh, privatization? Uh, thank you. I, I think, as my colleague says, uh, there, there are a lot of questions. And uh, as members of parliament, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's within our laws, basically, to, to be engaged. You know, because if you do, you know, such, such um, a transaction of huge, uh, you, know, you know, economic implications without uh, public participation, because members of parliament are actually involved in public participation so that they are able to, to help their people, <laughs> you know, collect, uh, you know, their views and, uh, and, and you know, and, and approvals if at all, uh, you know, people will, uh, will, will, will want to, to go with the government. But again, this is something that hasn't been, and that's why Baba is uh, obviously, <laughs> as the watchman of this country, as the gatekeeper, is complaining. And he's not just complaining out of, uh, you know, uh, out of the blues. Uh, there's a huge implication in terms of, uh, you, know, you know, what would privatization mean? I know that this country really, uh, you know, aligns itself with the SDGs, you know, SDG 17, for example, talks of, you know, public-private partnerships, which is good. But, you know, you can't achieve private-public uh, partnership, the PPP we are talking about, without public participation. I mean, people are key. 
and, and so when members of parliament are not engaged, you know, we just somehow, you know, wake up in the morning and you read, you know, uh, 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 that these companies have been uh, earmarked for privatization and we have not been engaged, we have not collected the views of the people, you don't know what the cons are, you know, we have not done a SWOT analysis. Uh, a sort of what exactly would would this mean to my people? KICC, as, we, as, as you hear, you know, we've had it for, since we grew up. Everybody identifies themselves with KICC as a, as a property of this country, as a public, you know, entity. So when, when you hear, and, and, and there is generally, um, you know, when people think of privatization, you know, what comes into your mind? You, these foreign investors, you know, foreign, foreigners who come to, you know, we are auctioning our country. We are auctioning our land. We are auctioning the monuments and our history. So we have not, Kenyans have not really approved. You know, so pu public participation, public participation, if it was done very well, I don't think even members of parliament would have an issue. Every member of parliament would come and, you know, you know discuss and give views of, uh, you know, collected from their people. Uh, and, 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 and so we would have a consensus. That's why, you see, everybody is up in arms trying to protect what they feel, um, you know, even these investors. Who are they? Who are they? We're just hearing, I don't know, Rono, you know, who and who and who and, uh, you know, we need to understand who are these people? What is their history? What, are, what is their standing? What is it in terms of their, their allegiance to this country? You know, there are so many parameters that we need to understand. What are their tax, you know, um, status in this country? Because we have a huge responsibility to protect what belongs to, to, to us. So members of parliament have a right to question and to actually even, uh, you, know, um, no, you know, fail to approve. And so that is why you see it is, uh, it is a process that will not just, you know, run like that. There are, there, are, there are issues that when they come to the floor of the house, every member of parliament owns it. And so it becomes easier. But again, when but you have it's, majority... It's notable. They already passed it. It is a law. So clearly, it is. <laughs> they took a position on it. But, but before see, Treasury comes for my neck, yes. they, are, they have invited public participation. But it's, yeah, it's uh, the, so this is the public notice. Uh, the National Treasury and Economic Planning uh, has prepared the 2023 privatization program in accordance with the Privatization Act of 2023. Uh, the program can be accessed for the, from the National Treasury website. And uh, pursuant to the Constitution, the Privatization Act 2023, and all other relevant legislation, the National Treasury invites members of the public to submit written comments and or input memoranda on the 2023 the, privatization the program uh, in the prescribed format and send them electronically to privatization at treasury.go.ke or through post or hand delivered to the following address on or before the close of business, Monday the 11th of December 2023. Further members of the public are invited uh, to attend and provide comments on the 2023 privatization program at venues and dates provided uh, on the National Treasury website. Members of the public can also join a virtual meeting via a link provided on the same pro say on the said program uh, signed Njugunandongo, the cabinet secretary and national treasury um uh, and i did an economic planning i did promise we'd take a look at some of the reasons given in the schedule eh? but only just in the program coming, mm -hmm. you know this public participation in itself could be an afterthought you see the conversation around is it it's a requirement in law yes but it's an but afterthought uh, you see when you say that there was public participation it depends at, at what point it came about. Because if you look at the chronology of this issue of privatization, it started way back. So this issue of public participation is just to tick a box and say that there was compliance yes. with the law. But you know what, somebody yeah. has to sit and say which are the non-performing yeah. uh, parastatals, then they bring them on the table, they say these are the ones we suggest, uh, we are proposing, be privatized. I mean, at some point, there has to be some executive yeah. decision making. But let me, because I need to take a break. I know I can tell from your facial expression you're not convinced. <laughs> uh, but I, so I don't know whether, do we take a break and then we come back and look at some of the uh, rationale and then I'll get into the topic of conversation. Don't worry, I won't take too much of, of our time. Uh, so just for those joining us, uh, for your benefit, this is what we're discussing this morning. We are taking stock of inclusivity, socioeconomic and political inclusion of persons with disability and with me in studio i know marcy i've not given you a chance to speak on this issue it's because i'm like i don't know whether you should throw her in the <laughs> in the rapids 
<laughs> uh, Masi Mugure Gishunge, Board Member National Council for Persons with Disabilities, Sara Mudoni Kamau, uh, will not be joining us this morning, Association of Professional Women with Disabilities, but we do have uh, in studio Wanja Maina, NEC Member Jubilee Party, and Honorable Denita Gatti, former MP Persons with Disabilities. So we'll take stock uh, on the other side of this break. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, EACC, continues to spearhead the fight against corruption and unethical practices in Kenya in accordance with its constitutional mandate. On Saturday 9th December 2023, the Commission will lead Kenya's commemoration of the International African Anti-Corruption Day 2023, which is marked annually by all state parties to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCA. The commemoration will be aired live on NTV from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The theme of this year's commemoration is Unkirk at 20, uniting the world against corruption. Join us for a pre-commemoration discussion on NTV this Tuesday, 5th December from 9.30 p.m. with EACC Chairperson Dr. David Oginde on With All Due Respect. Welcome to the Nation Shopping Festival, the biggest soccer sale in town, featuring 500 vendors ready to bring you the best deals and products. Discover everything you need under one roof, including a dedicated kids' playing area and a tempting food court with mouth-watering delicacies. Visit www.nationshoppingfestival.com for more information and join us at the University of Nairobi grounds from 4th to 9th December. Make this holiday season extra special with the Nation Shopping Festival. Mother, tell me the truth. Did you really patch things up with Mrs. Irene? Yes, darling. Because now I understand that the love that you feel for each other is very strong. I promise you that I'm not going to oppose it anymore. How should I know what that is? Don't pretend. Morales brought this to you earlier. You are running DNA tests on someone to see if you have a child. I don't want your brother rubbing the fact that you have no interest right into my face! All right then. I'll do whatever you wish. You better do what I wish! Not just because of that. It's your obligation! Abdul and that woman are getting married. I came from there and she told me. Head over heels. How do you keep your toilets clean? I use normal detergent and bleach for washing. The detergent and bleach cleanless can leave behind yellowness, rust, and germs. Havix 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. And kills 99.9% illness causing germs in your toilet, including the COVID-19 virus. How can we expect God to bless our nation with the contemptuous Kadu attitude? When he went to make that statement, it was a decision he made on his own and he didn't consult anyone. Serve the people. Discharge my duties. For a moment, I wondered whether I had placed the wrong script there, but it was the right one. Tell us about your golden uh, headache. That is one of the matters where I will not accept a virtual hearing. I want to be present personally and meet my accuser. The Kenya Medical Training College, KMTC, is celebrating its 92nd graduation ceremony on Thursday, December 7th, 2023. The event will be held at the Moi International Sports Center, Kasarani, Nairobi, from 10 a.m. and will be live on NTV and the KMTC official YouTube channel. The chief guest will be Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Honorable Rigadi Gachagua, EGH. Visit www.kmtc.ac.ke for more information on the graduation, training programs, and application procedure. KMTC, training for better health. The Sport Essence is a light serum, quickly absorbed to clear dark marks. 
Rich moisturizing cream is a gel cream type that deeply hydrates and prevents dark marks. I highly recommend Melano CC for healthy and happy skin. Roto! All right, welcome back to AM Live with me in studio. I have three lovely ladies, Massimo Gure, Gishunge, Board Member National Council for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, we also have Wanjao Maina, NEC Member Jubilee Party, and Mashimiwa Honorable uh, Denita Gatti in studio as well. Uh, I, we, I did promise I would look at the privatization program and then uh, we'd get into the conversation. So the, um, how they described it? The selection criterion for the the uh, parasitals that are on the I don't want to say chopping block, but <laughs> what do you call it? Like it's not mm -hmm. okay. Let me just say to be privatized. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kenyatta International Convention <laughs> Center, wholly owned by GOK. No reliance on exchequer for recurrent or capital grants. Profitable requires to be incorporated into a limited comp into a limited company, uh, Machua Industry National Oil Corporation of Kenya, wholly owned owned by GOK. Uh, poor financial performance with huge losses, negative working capital, and low liquidity. Is that? Uh, let me see. If, can I zoom in a little bit more? I think it will be better. Uh, is that okay? Are you guys able to see that better? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so so the, the justification given for KICC is that it requires to be incorporated into a limited company. It is uh, in a mature industry. Uh, the one given for National Oil Corporation of Kenya is poor financial performance with huge losses, negative working capital, and low liquidity. Um, which other big ticket item? Uh, is here. KP. Let us see. Kenya Pipeline Company. Kenya Pipeline. Uh, no reliance on exchequer oh, for okay. current or capital grants. Profitable. Yes. Remittance of yearly dividends to exchequer has monopolistic characteristics evidenced by lack of competitors in the market. Has several ongoing legal cases. Uh, new Kenya Cooperative uh, Creameries. Uh, cyclical performance but high potential. Uh, the dairy industry is mature. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, we're at number 11. Rivertex, uh, East Africa Limited, uh, loss making, relies on GOK for recurrent and development budget support, operates in a mature sector, attracts private sector capital and expertise, reduce the need for GOK funding. So Wanja, do you, do you have a better idea now of why the decision uh, that they, it would be better to privatize them? I mean, uh, if you have a vibrant private sector already meeting uh, the demands, for example, KCC, I mean, why not privatize it? Same with, I think the other reason, the other one they gave us uh, in a mature industry was which one? K KCC. K KCC, KCC yeah. yes. Yeah. Then, there, there, then there are others which are loss making, mm -hmm. so they want to reduce the reliance on the exchequer. Um, so okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. Masi. Let, uh, is that okay? Or oh, Masi, did you have something to say yeah, on this? All the the key uh, challenge and why people are complaining about this, we are saying that um, what was to start with is giving these reasons now and hearing the opinion of Kenyans, and this is why this is happening. Then the reaction will not have come. Now the reaction comes because people feel like the decision is already made and um, the notice and the participation is coming after. So the feeling is, this is why we shouldn't have begun and see what is the alternative. If these are the three justifications, are they for the people? Um, does, it make, does the uh, decision make it better? Or is there an alternative? Now, it's like uh, you coming back and letting me know the reasons why you did what you did instead of uh, starting with this is what mm. i intend to do <laughs> what are your thoughts about it and then now we make the but decision but isn't that what together. they're doing now because it's not cast in stone yet and so now that is why the reactions of kenyans okay good mm. i like i like that kenyans are woke 
and engaged. <laughs> they are. I love it. Even where the Finance Act was concerned, although uh, Julian Zaboko told us for the Finance Act to Gianzanga October, <laughs> not at the tail end of, of yeah. uh, the budgeting process. Yeah, yeah. but this government being, uh, being what it is, I mean, uh, <laughs> the decision has already been made. That is, you know, that is the bottom line. The, you know, the, 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 the public participation that is, we are being subjected to is, uh, is just, just to rubber stamp what has already been, uh, been decided. Because it has already been decided, okay, new cases is making losses. Oh, Kenya Pipeline is facing, you know, legal tussles or whatever. Uh, you know, they have already decided, you know, whether you approve or not, we have reasons, you know. Uh, you know, so, you, I mean, you know, let's wait for it. But I, I, I think for me, the reason why Baba is, uh, is, 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 is into this is because of the huge, uh, the implication is completely negative. And, uh, and um, you know, those are the reasons to, to really protect, uh, to protect Kenyans. Our views are coming in later on after you can see very well we, they have already justified the reasons <laughs> they want to sell. You know, so, you know, Mama Boga in, uh, in my village in Isabania will, uh, will be like, oh, Wame Sama Nini? Okay, uh-huh. You know, how, 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 how will this... Uh, how will this work? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's the, uh, the public participation, the invitation for the public to submit memoranda mm -hmm. um, that has been made by the National Treasury. There is a proposal uh, by Raila Odinga. When you hear Denise say Baba, she's referring to <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raila Odinga uh, as the one Kenya party leader. Uh, so he is proposing a referendum. He says if you want to privatize these companies, then... Yes. Let us let that every Kenyan have a say. That is the tradition. Let that is every how Kenyan it has have been. a say. Yeah, All right. So it. the conversation continues. Hi, Jay Sharpo. But allow me to transition us now into the and you know, <laughs> Denita, yes. you are just allowing me here not to mention it's it's chairperson Commonwealth, uh, right? Uh, parliamentarians. Parliamentarians. Yeah, with disabilities. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> chair, should have been calling you chair. <laughs> yes, I, I was actually the chairperson of the Commonwealth Parliamentarians with uh -huh. Disabilities. It's a global body um, yes. of parliamentarians across, you know, Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean. You know, looking at issues of uh, of, 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 of disability within our, our our parliament. So, you know, it was an honor, and that is a position I had when I was serving as a member of parliament. You know, and it, it goes to a, a, a sitting member. Now that I'm not in parliament, that position went to another. To, you know to another region to another to another country mm. so but you know I've, you know I've, I've, I've quite learned uh, you know you know how legislators uh, are, are implementing their disability laws and, and we, 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 we are trying we mm -hmm. are there yeah and also it gives you a perspective uh, that we can use to compare where we are at as Kenya Absolutely. And, and from a global perspective Absolutely. so I did say I would look at some two stories now we are firmly in topic of conversation uh, this morning has to do with inclusivity and uh, I believe it was a healthy nation page uh, where is this Here we go. Page uh, four inside, there's a pullout, ladies. Uh, Healthy Nation pullout, uh, pages four and five of that uh, pullout. Just flip on, uh, flip through here on my touch screen. Uh -huh. Uh, there we go. Oh, okay. It's, it's uh, cooperating now. Uh, so toiling at the toilets is how it has been phrased here on the front page. Four. It's page four and five, yeah? Yeah. I just wanted to look at... Uh, in, in it's been highlighted. How disregard... Sorry, I'm guessing... Uh, Jackson, Jackson Derango is my director. He's in my ear. He's told me to figure out a way to make, to bring it closer so that we can take a better look. Ooh, okay. I've made it worse. <laughs> Let me just pull it up again. You know how technology can be. Yes. <laughs> uh, some of us are not the tech savviest, but we try, we try, we try. I should have it up shortly. There we go. 
There we go. Ah, oh, few fingers crossed it worked. All right, uh, so tough call how disregard for building regulations leaves more than 350,000 disabled Kenyans bogged down by inconveniences. So when we flip now to page four and five, um, where the report is contained, the fuller report, uh, here we go. The pressing need for, I think this one I'll just have to uh, zoom out. Um, let me see, if, figure out a way if we can, how we can see both pages because it cuts across uh, the two pages. Hmm. <laughs> Jackson, do not be a naysayer. He's telling me in my ear, I doubt that's possible. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's make do with what we have. Uh, the pressing need for uh, disability friendly toilets. And um, there is an image further down, although the, the, the gist of it is this. More than 350,000 Kenyans with mobility challenges have difficulties using public toilets as construct contractors, constructors overlook the laid down guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, so there's meant to be a low sink, a low bowl and support so that persons uh, with disability uh, can use uh, the facilities comfortably. Uh, there's uh, a a lady showing you know how that would look how that would work and uh, quote here the government through the national construction authority in collaboration with the national council for persons with uh, disabilities is actively engaged in sensitizing um, contractors uh, just your thoughts on this report uh, first of all I'll start with you Wanja okay thank you so much Olive uh, and uh, I just wish to say that when I see that picture what comes to mind for me is actually about children, and this is what comes to mind. A while back, a friend of mine was involved in an NGO project in Kitale and Eldoret. She was telling me that some of the children in those schools avoid taking water or break, porridge during break because they were afraid of keep, to keep telling their friends to take them to the toilet. So this is a child who is in a school but they're afraid of telling their friends to take them to the toilet because the toilets are not so good. So the child would actually miss the meals and water and, and breakfast. Mm -hmm. Now, this is quite telling of the fact that w accessible washrooms, especially for children who are not able to express their needs, actually could even affect their nutrition and their needs. However, while I acknowledge that I could I be in a way privileged, I also like to talk about these issues based on statistics. Around 80% of disabled people live in villages, in rural areas, and that's according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. So in as much as there is a lot of sensitization on how to make buildings accessible in the cities, what are the numbers telling us? Yes, the city dwellers, it's okay, they can also have their good, goodwill, their, their things, but most of these people are based in rural areas if we are to go by the numbers. What then are we talking about when we, 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 you know, we do that comparison? That said, you know, access to a washroom really is about dignity, is about privacy. I'm sure there's no one, even a child who is like, I have a small sister and by the time she's like four, she doesn't want to be escorted to the washroom. So it's about dignity, it's about privacy, it's about feeling like you're not bothering people a lot. So I see it as an important aspect of construction. However, I also noticed that either most of the con constructors or most of the home homeowners or even people whom we rent from, either they don't have the sensitization, but there has always been this perception that accommodation is expensive. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you see like that toilet that you've shown us in the, in the newspaper, your average person will be like, hey, this looks so expensive. This looks so complicated. So maybe it would also be important that as we are doing the sensitization, there could be an element of showing that we can work with local products that we have. If it's that metallic thing I've seen on the side, I'm sure in Kenya we can fabricate anything. It can be fabricated to be used somewhere because I do understand that your average person with a disability is not able to afford rental apartments in high-end neighborhoods. So it is, it could be almost, I could be almost accurate to say that they live in the informal settlements due to the low economic means. So then how does that translation uh, translate to a person who is living in Huruma in a small rental house or 4K or something? 
So I see an element of demystifying that accommodation and inclusivity is not expensive, use of local products, but also overall just having inclusion as an initial design uh, of construction so that people can live a dignified life. Mm. Yeah. Um, Marcy, yes. <laughs> from a point of view of, for somebody who has not, who is not dealing it's not a, a reality for them, or they don't ha have no people who are not acquainted, or you know, are, are just not aware. Because uh, uh, Wanja talks about sensitization, they, they say, ah, majority can use the toilet the way it is, so why? Yeah, it's only maybe one or two who will need the, the, the a, a toilet that can accommodate somebody who's who will have challenges uh, using, you know, uh, that is uh, will require an accessible toilet. Uh, so what do you say to those people? Those uh, The other day I hosted uh, a show on interior design and, and one of the interior designers uh, spoke about uh, Kikuyu Gothic <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> type of apartments. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Where they're not too concerned about lighting yeah. <laughs> or, or the aesthetics. <laughs> uh, but now, you know what I mean? It's about cutting costs. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why is this important? Um, it's important because disability is not a problem of just a few of us or a selected um, people. And the challenge we have and why this awareness is very important is we need to tell the society that disability is not for specific people mm. and anyone can get disability at any point. Um, in the disability movement, we keep um, referring and saying uh, in 2003, when the late president Kibaki got an accident, is the time that we got our disability act, mm. right? Because he, he later asked the experience and understands the challenges of persons with disabilities. We don't have to have everybody get disability or or have our relatives or people in power getting into disability so that they can advocate for the right of persons with disability. And for me, about accessibility, it is about us being intentional and not an afterthought. Mm -hmm. Because the moment it's an afterthought, the constructor will come up with a huge bu uh, building that looks beautiful. And I've Absolutely. in many times experienced this whereby you go to a place, it has this very beautiful stairs and everything. And um, for, for, for the people out there, that is beautiful. But for me, I look at it like, can I access it? How accessible is the place? When Wanda mentioned about the student in Kitale, I was like, aha, uh -huh, that is very far. That was my story when I grew up and being in a regular school where um, we were only three students uh, in primary school who had disability, right? I remember going to school in per week, three days, because I couldn't sit on that carafe a seat for continuously five days without a comfortable food rest just to take care of my needs yeah so the essence and again when i think about this year the international disability day theme i underline the word rescue mm. we're talking about sdgs mm -hmm. and these sdgs we are talking about we are rescuing when um i think in terms of grammar when you're rescuing something it is in danger mm -hmm. it is not there is something wrong somewhere mm -hmm. and so when we look at uh, the sdgs the the sustainable development goals that have been here for some time are of persons with disabilities enjoined and can we comfortably like we're talking about taking stock right and so when Wanja was talking and what is coming to my mind is in the rural setup where I grew up in some interior part of Meru, right? Where um, basically even the toilet I was using right at home, it had to be modified with the little money that my parents earned for me to access it, yeah? So I want to connect that with the SDG number one, no poverty. Number two, uh, no um, zero anger. Number three, well-being. Are persons with disabilities in the grassroots able to have that laxity of saying, or as a nation, forget about even persons with disability in general, have we catered for those basics for them, mm. just basic mm. decent lives for people with disabilities? Mm. The moment we have the awareness, the moment that people can say we are having basic needs being met, then at that point we can be able to say, like we're talking about the rescuing and uniting for a purpose. 
the unit comes here is the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. We are supposed to um, um, ensure that the policies, the laws that are there are being implemented. Mm -hmm. But then we cannot do it alone unless we work together with all stakeholders, both mm -hmm. private, mm -hmm. both the media houses for awareness and highlighting mm -hmm. this and sensitization so that now as a society in general, we feel it is not a problem of the people in disability themselves to be here speaking for our needs so that they can be done. But it is someone without disability. It is Every other policy maker, when I'm making this decision, I'm looking at it, what about persons with disabilities? We don't have to be in every space for things to be done for persons with disabilities. We need to convert people and all of us to speak in one voice. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes very easy for the National Council to implement and say, yes, it is being done. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mushmiwa Denita. Your story is one of basically similar to what Masi was talking about. It mm -hmm. can happen to anyone. <laughs> you never know. So, I mean, you know better than anybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and I can tell you, uh, um, Olive, the problem that uh, we have, have had in this country is, is, is exclusion. Mm. Exclusion of persons with disabilities in every aspect. You know, you know I, I joined the disability you know, world nine years ago. And I can tell you, it is easier to tell that actual persons with disabilities, those who have had disability for so long, have been excluded in so many ways, in, in, for so long. And I've come to realize that persons with disabilities, our problem, in, our problem as persons with disabilities is, is, is not even our own disability. It, uh -huh. it is these barriers. Yes. You see these barriers now we're talking about. When a child cannot access a toilet, you know, a child in school with a disability cannot access, you know, you even fear, as husband just says, to take tea because, you know, tea triggers you to obviously go to the, you know, seek, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, toilet. Uh, you know, you, you, you kind of deny yourself, you know, things that your colleagues are, are enjoying. So the problem that we have here is actually that exclusion, even in, in, in design. In designing, you know, we, we, we have not been intentional for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. That is why. If persons with disabilities of this country live in counties, counties, this government, I can tell you 90% of governors don't even understand. They have, they have no idea that uh, they, I have disabled people in my county and they need, you know, A, B, C, D. No, they just got the votes and they, they are seated there and they, they don't even think. And you know, when they're looking for votes, they completely mobilize these disabled people to vote. They, 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 you know, they, they'll mobilize them thoroughly and nicely to vote for them. But when they go there, they forget. They now, what do we have, we, 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 we are suggesting, we as the disability partners, that collaboration with the government, collaboration with the government and this, our disability partners, actors, so that the government, because we, we, we make policies. We have no shortage of policies, especially on, uh, on disability matters. Ninyingi, currently as we speak, you know very well that it is a requirement by counties to develop the Persons with Disabilities Act. Acts. So that each county has a Disability Act that constitutes uh, members of Persons with Disabilities, uh, that constitutes boards, that, you know, that really takes care of that county in terms of disability matters. Now, many countries, still counties are not moving. You know, they're moving very, very slowly. <laughs> and that is usually the history of this country. Anything that touches disability is usually left until the last minute when it is disability day. Now, every county seeming, uh, government seeming to be very busy and concerned. Mm. That is not how we should be working. We must be very intentional from day one. Counties right now have their own, uh, you know, they're expanding roads, they're expanding markets, they're expanding their cities. Mm -hmm. And you realize that even within the boards of, of, of markets, the boards of cities, there's no disabled person who sits even in th those boards so that they're able to say, now, let us engage, let us think, let us bring our mind to what would a disability inclusive, you know, atmosphere feel like for my people in my county. So that's why we're saying as, as, as colleagues here, it, we must be intentional from day one mm -hmm. in designing. And that's why you see, when you look at SDGs, which Kenya is a signatory to, yeah. if you look at our constitution, has, it, 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 is, it is so much in line with the SDGs. Mm. The Vision 2030 is in line with the SDGs. We have SDG 11 that basically talks about accessibility. That is the major challenge for persons with disabilities. Look at Nairobi. Nairobi here, 
when you're expanding the roads, you know, have you seen pavements, you know, Tara, where someone can wheel themselves? Now, mm. if Nairobi is still st struggling with accessibility, trying to make some nice pavement, some nice... Uh, <laughs> what about Bigori or Turkana? Huh? Or somewhere in, in, in Wasengishu, those sides? Completely. So, even when we're talking about this awareness creation, these governors, these governors must be told so that even when they have their own ministers for roads and things like that, these are the ministers who are now supposed to be told persons with disabilities must be in the board to help yeah. you design your road. Mm. But you realize that even these ministers, they, they, they don't even think that we, we need those. Counties are built, uh, you go to counties, in our rural areas, the counties and rural areas, you realize that a governor's uh, office is up. Up. And there's no lift. There's no elevator. So meaning you are ex excluding persons with disabilities to come From to your office. that yeah. office. To access mm -hmm. that as a governor. So we have a lot of challenges. And people must, people must be compelled, governors must be compelled first to implement that, uh, the, to, to develop the Disability Act in their counties. Two, to ensure that even within those counties, the governors are able to actually prioritize disability as their agenda. Now, Nairobi County, where I am now, where I live, held the disability day at, uh, at Ruaraka Grounds the other day. Yeah. And we were there. And I can tell you Nairobi is trying. Mm -hmm. Nairobi is, is you, know, you know, I listened to their, to their, <laughs> you know, to, to their um, uh, plan of how they want to make Nairobi accessible, how they want to make Nairobi beautiful, how Nairobi has to be, you know, and they have a plan of actually, and I want to, to thank Governor Sakaja, because in, in his uh, government, you realize he has literally carved a niche. He has carved a ministry of inclu in, in inclusion and, uh, and partnerships. Yeah. And that ministry has a CEC. Dr. Nyalita, she's called Dr. Nyalita, mm -hmm. specifically to look at issues of disability. But when you go to other counties, you realize that governor, you know, disability matters in counties is put under sports, yeah. uh, gender, gender sports, uh, youth, special, and, uh, programs. special programs, you know. So disability dies. It has died, you know, <laughs> because nobody thinks about disability. You clap it all together. So, so, so these people tend to just look at now these other things that are of importance to them and disability disappears. Mm -hmm. Governor Sakaja has tried in Nairobi and he's trying to improve. And we want I'm that. Sure. I'm sure he's listening and saying some good press finally. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Because we have seen, you know, you know as a legislator, yeah. I, you know those are things we observe. Some good press. And when it is, it, is, it is the truth, you say. And when it needs improvement, you say. I'm telling you, uh, Olive, disability is not our problem. Barriers are the problem. Exclusion for us as disabled people is the problem. From, from, from wherever. If our persons with disabilities are not employed, we are done. So mm -hmm. when we are talking about this, uh, uh, removing barriers and uh, ensuring that our country is in line with the SDGs, which Kenya is a signatory. Kenya is a signatory to the huge UN conventions there, treaties which it has signed. Mm -hmm. But we are trying. From where I sit, we, we are basically trying Major. relatively in the region. Mm -hmm. In the region, we are trying as a country, and we must yeah. keep the momentum. Right. We must collaborate with, the, with everybody else. There was also the other story, if somebody can help me pull it up on the People Daily. Can, can you help me pull it up on the touch screen? Just go and then tap uh, People Daily. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm asking for, for some assistance from our studio. Yeah. Uh, SCS, technician, yeah. technical. So, up on the tabs, do you see people daily? There we go, there we go. So um, Jackson, <laughs> Jackson is in this year. Jackson Dirango, there we go. Survey, women dominate lowly jobs. More than half of exactly. females engaged in work that fails decency standard. And the reason I, I bring that is because you've, you've, you've both mentioned the, the SDGs. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to pull up um, uh, some of what was stated in that uh, report. Uh, quick second almost uh, there did i share that with you marcy let me just pull up uh, although I, I can pull up the okay. the report on the touch screen as well and uh, so it looks at for example p where so sdgs uh, several p's mm -hmm. people planet right mm -hmm. climate change we're having the cop 28 mm -hmm. it looks at uh, prosperity financial inclusion yeah. uh, it looks at peace um Persons with disabilities are disproportionately affected by conflict in several ways. Uh, partnership, despite recent setbacks, the 2030 agenda and the SDGs remain the essential uh, roadmap um, out of the multiple crises that the world is facing. But I'm, I'm going to start with the, with the people. 
right? Mm -hmm. And this is what they say, and this is according to the United Nations, women and girls with disabilities are acutely vulnerable to being left behind due to the intersection of gender mm -hmm. and disability. Uh, which compounds the challenges and barriers they encounter. An intersectional lens is crucial for fulfilling the pledge that no one will be left behind. Mm -hmm. So the other day I held a conversation on, so as part of the 16 days of activism, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had young women who contested elections in the last, in 2022. Mm -hmm. And some of their stories, uh, I think it was uh, Gabriela Lorene who contested in... Uh, what was it in Samburu? Was it in Samburu, Baringo? I, I, uh, like Ipia North. Like Ipia North. She contested like Ipia North. So she said, just getting on that podium. Yeah. As a politician. <laughs> just getting I'm on that podium. Accessible. And you want yes. you want to be next to the principal. <laughs> do you know how do you you know Tim uh, yes, Westlands? Yes. And and when he would go for the Azimio rallies and what it would take yeah. for him to make yeah. his way up yes. to the podium. Absolutely. You have to literally have right like, say, Can Absolutely. you let him? through yes. let him through Absolutely. so i was and and so she was speaking she she's she doesn't suffer from uh any physical challenges uh but uh she was saying as a woman she to get that microphone first of all so you can imagine <laughs> somebody who has mobility challenges what would that entail in that political space denita you'll speak to this let you me know? tell you, let me tell you, I've been there. I've been there. I've campaigned on a wheelchair. And you can imagine, and, and, and you know persons with obesity are usually the target, and especially if you're strong and you are disabled. Why, you know, society doesn't even expect you to be strong. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you be doing politics? <laughs> you know, and I can tell you, even political players, that the biggest culprit in terms of uh, discrimination for disabled people in politics, that I can tell you. You, you, you realize that because if we are very serious, we would make our podiums have rams but we never have that time political you know they, they don't have that time. and then you see someone being carried up, up up because obviously for you to be seen you have to be up on the podium you can't speak from down and i experienced that that, that, that thing and you realize that even when we, they're thinking they don't even think we have a disabled person who is probably strong and who needs to be seen you know you 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 even when they you know it's it, because politics is about competition you, they, you can't find your space there at the podium. It has already been, it's, it has already been occupied. So we have a lot to do, especially politically. You know, we, these other things somehow we are trying. But politically, persons with disabilities are doing badly mm -hmm. when it comes to the campaigns. Now, even within political parties or, 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 or the political field, if it, if, uh, poli uh, 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 parties or players are very, very uh, uh, genuine, then they would make the, uh, the, 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 access, uh, the accessibility something that is real. So that when a person with disability goes there, you can be able to speak and you go, <laughs> and, uh, you know, like any other person. But because it is competition, and I think political party players they know that it is competition, and they also, most of them also don't even expect that a, a disabled person can be strong enough. Even when you're strong enough, <laughs> you're not expected to, be, <laughs> to, be, to, 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 to have that voice. And, you know, we have been in this field, and we can see it very deliberately, even in front of your own eyes. So you can imagine what, what is there. So persons with disabilities in politics, you go to vote, you know, because we are expected, we are just expected to be voters. You know, at least the much we can do is to vote in others to go. You know, you now you, you, you they, they can't also assist you. You go to the to to, to, to you know to the uh, uh, voting booths. If someone does not see, if you are visually impaired, yeah. you you know because you have to go with somebody. You have to go with your aid to assist you. In, uh, you know, the law is not very very, you know, uh, uh, sufficient enough. You realize that even when you are going to, 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 to vote to the boots, accessibility is a problem, you can't move. So we have been trying to see how do we as, a, as legislators make the whole political participation of persons with disabilities, both as voters and as candidates. Inclusive. You know, so, so I mean, yeah. Wanja, you neck member, not a small <laughs> title, you know, not a small title. Yeah. You, you know, Oliver, I just sort of really agree with what my two friends are saying here. And I just want to say that the barriers are structural and they're actually real. I'm coming from even cultural, because some of these things are actually cultural. Now, in most cultures, even if you look at you know, issues of peace, planet, 
most peace or most peace and negotiators and brokers are actually male. So culture has constantly made women to look like they cannot make good leaders. Women have constantly been described as irrational, they keep fighting amongst each other, they are worst enemies of each other. So those are the cultural myths that have been made to sound like their truth. Now that is compounded by a candidate, by a ticket or a candidature where you have a person with a disability who is perceived to be weak. Why are they bothering themselves with mm. this kind of politics? Mm, mm. In any case, these people with disabilities get angry really, 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 really <laughs> quick. Those are some of the myths I've heard out there. Well, in my party now that in the spirit of looking for solutions, what I did first, I was able to push to have zero, zero rated. All the people who vied under the Jubilee ticket, when they attempted the nomination, they didn't pay any fee compared to the other candidates. And that, uh, candidate, and that was just an inspiration and, uh, and, and uh, some sort of an incentive to tell people, present yourself. But that can tell you that even after that, they didn't go very far in terms of winning to the main general election. And that could also be attributed to also the attitude of the voter. But only if, we could, if I could just go back and talk about what you, you read for us in the people daily. Mm -hmm. A huge percent of women are in lowly paid job. And I want to give a statistic, and that's why whenever I talk about this topic, I really think about children. Because for the adults, it's like things are already bad, and I'm sorry to put it that way. But how can we make it better for the future? Generation now, younger. according to UNDP, only 1% of women with disabilities, women and girls, are literate. Only 1%. So it means if you put disabled people, if they are 100, only one is able to read and write. In the case of men, it's only 3%. What does that mean? That means that your average person with a disability is likely to be in the streets of Nairobi mm -hmm. doing informal hooking and trading. Why? Because you know that the more educated you are, the more chances of getting better, of, uh, you know, it delays motherhood, you're able to make better choices for yourself, your ch children are likely to be have a good health, and you're also likely to get better jobs. So we're also looking at a problem what we are having now is simple is sim symptomic of problems that started way back from birth. While your peers were being taken to school, you are not taken to school. While your peers were going, you know, the stages of life school, after school you go to Nini, you make friends, you become friends, you know, go to high school. These people are not taken to school. So you realize that there's so much that has to be done to correct the wrongs. Because you see, a person who is like 40 and they were not educated, you can tell they missed quite a, quite mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. Now that said, uh, just recently, we, there is the two-third multi-sectoral committee mm -hmm. that was created by CS Jomwa. Mm -hmm. uh, needless to say that they don't have a person with a disability in that committee, but that is beside the point, although it's the main point. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had people presenting memos. Mm -hmm. I do remember, together with Senator Denita, we put ourselves together mm -hmm. with the support of one of the local partners, and we presented a memo to the two-third committee, and they were quite quite interested in our issues and we did the soft copy and then we we presented ourselves to the kenya national bureau uh, kenya national library where mm. they were listening to the views of people mm. now if you look at legislation and policy the constitution in kenya talks about two that not more than two third mm -hmm. but you can already tell that <coughs> what really means is that at least have a third of women because the yes. women are the minority mm. so our question was where does that leave me as a person with a disability who is young who is somewhere in between things. Mm -hmm. Because this multiple identity could actually be a weakness. When you go to the youth, they just think, oh, you are a youth, but not two youth. When you go to the people mm -hmm. with uh, disability like this, you, they, you can also tell that it's male dominated. The men believe that they are better. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the women, women are always very fast. They are, there's some sort of othering. You go there, you go there, you go there. So I, I, in real sense, you do realize that this multiple identity, and that's what you have described as an intersectional lens, could actually be disadvantaging yes. people. When we talk about yes, two, third, yes. two third of seats, or a third, let's say it's 10, so at least four or three, three seats, then the question should be, what should be the identity of those four seats? Some of us argue that two third as a principle is good, but if you introspect it, it is discriminatory in a way. Here's why. Affirmative action within affirmative action is what we truly, truly need. Mm -hmm. For example, a political party is making a party list. Man, woman, one man, woman, man, woman. If truly we want to see the diversity of Kenya presented, if number one is a woman who is youthful, 
Number three should be a pastoral woman. Number five should be a woman maybe from a marginalized community. Number seven or number six should be a woman with a disability. Because now this issue of just have women leads to other women with other multiple identities being othered in some funny corner. And in the end, the chances of, before we talk about my friend Senator Danita as is a, is a woman in politics, they'll just say, Nazile slots is a what work on a disability. <laughs> so what is the affirmative action within that two third or that one third? And those are some of the propositions we told the committee. We said that if there's something that is to be given, that one third should be given to women with multiple identities. And that the, the Constitution of Kenya talks about progressive presentation of 5%, mm. that is Article 54, mm. to give things appointive and, um, yeah, appointive and nominative positions for people with disabilities. Yeah. But the debate is, when you say progress, what is progress? How is what it is measured? Progressive. According yeah. to what, measure. if it, what if it takes a hundred years? Because what is the standard? What is the Absolutely. also when you don't when your government ministry or even a political party does not give the five percent of jobs? What is the repercussion? Mm. Because you see, most Kenyans. Okay. So Wanja, mm -hmm. uh, we yeah, break. I okay. need to take a break. Okay. But we'll come back with that, especially because there is awareness, a lot of awareness where women and youth in general are concerned. Yeah. The thirty percent uh, procurement true. introduced by mm. Kibaki. Mm. There is Wezo fund. There is youth fund. There is the hustler fund. Mm. Uh, but people specifically know what persons with disabilities are due. The affirmative action. Where has the progress been okay. and where are the gaps on the other side of this break? financial potential and we are here to help you reach new heights enjoy an attractive interest rate of up to 14 percent per annum on your savings make the most of this exclusive offer today and let your money thrive for more details call us today or visit a branch near you stanbic bank on my dark marks, I've tried everything, but hardly any results. Nivea Luna 630 works from day one. With visible results in just two weeks, you'll see the difference or get your money back. The results speak for themselves. Join the one million women already using the number one Lumina 630 from Nivea. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Everybody knows it's Christmas time. Could be Santa Claus. Kenya Twendembele. NCBA. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Exponential potential. and welcome to The Morning Fix. This is the show where we do Ukarabati wa Asubui. My name is Mariam Bishar. And the most bankable host, Brian Aseli. Good morning, my neighbors! <laughs> get up and get ready for the most electrifying morning show on your airwaves. Your airwaves. Mariam and Aseli on The Morning Fix every weekday from 6 to 10 a.m. I think Uganda is the only country that they can actually do a musical. All of them. Because they mean? speak funny. No. They speak funny. <laughs> Only on ninety six point three Nation FM. All they talk about the best.
The Sport Essence is a light serum, quickly absorbed to clear dark marks. Rich moisturizing cream is a gel cream type that deeply hydrates and prevents dark marks. I highly recommend Melano CC for healthy and happy skin. Roto. So, no, I wasn't able to write it. I was trying to pull the report up on the screen and my director is like, where is Olive? <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I got caught up in the stories. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Wanja, before we took the break, we were discussing affirmative action where uh, persons with disabilities is concerned and the intersection because there is an intersection. Mm. Uh, so you are sharing, you are talking about you're a woman, mm. you're a youth, mm. you're a person. Mm. Uh, yeah. with disability. Yeah. With disability. Yeah. In yeah. terms of affirmative action, yeah. uh, you were talking about the progressive, the 5%. Yes. Uh, progressive and you're like, you know, is this something that will take 100 years? Do you f feel that not enough has been done in that direction? I think in our country, sometimes <coughs> we take one step back and then we take 100 steps behind and then we take two in front. This is not really deliberate. And here's why. If you look at most county assemblies, including Nairobi, yeah. the the law talks about a representation of one MCA who is female and one MCA who is male with a disability. Nairobi does not have a representation of an MCA with a disability alongside 20 other counties. And yet the law says that there should be a nominated MCA in each. Therefore, it means someone else was able to circumvent the law to take a position that is not theirs. You know what that means? That means when hawkers are being pulled here, like there was a video that was trending mm -hmm. of a hawker woman somewhere around the corner here, there's no MCA who is actually able to hold a, to account and ask, how will we ensure that is this, this is not going to happen? Just the other day we saw hawkers uh, protesting outside of Governor Sakaja's office. Mm -hmm. I might not be privy to their grievances, but I know it has something to do with harassment and many other things. So who will talk for them if the law talks about an MCA to be representing their interest? And then all if just in that same breath, we are in the 16 days of activism. And I enjoyed your show with Akina Wanjiko Vega here. Mm -hmm. Research has shown that women with disabilities are three times likely to experience GBV compared to their non-disability peers. Now, when I look at those two issues, I actually see GBV as a cause of disability. See, we have covered many stories even on media of women. Kama ule mwenye alikatu wa mikono, samaya inukwambani. She's been disabled. Yeah, when she became disabled immediately thereafter. So my view is that even when you talk about these issues, for example, even conversations around GBV, <coughs> who is talking about those statistics? And it's even more sad to note that people with disabilities are likely to face G GBV in the hands of people around them, family members, uh, friends, uh, intimate partners, in institutions and these special schools where they are institutionalized. So for me, I see that having more people with disabilities in positions of decision making, having leaders who are sensitized will be a good step in terms of ensuring that moving into the future, this is not an afterthought. And in many cases, people with disabilities inclusion has been an afterthought. Just not too long time ago, I was called by one of the government ministries. You know, we have this conference, send me a list of 10 youth. So it's like they have already done their planning and then they come thereafter just for the optics and for ticking a box. But then the question is, how come no one has this inclusion in mind in the planning, in the design? It just comes at an afterthought, mm -hmm. at an after, as, as an afterthought. It tells uh, us that there's a, we have a long way to go in terms of inclusion. We have a long way in terms of just seeing people as people. But for me, I just want to talk to parents. 
uh, we cannot really talk about the past too much. We can only talk about the future. Mm -hmm. Every time I see a girl with a disability, I go to communities. And she looks like she's in a school going age and I see her on a weekday. It really bothers me. It is incumbent upon the parents because they are the primary caregivers and they are the ones God has obligated to take care of those children to educate them. Because when the more a child is educated, the higher chances of having an independent life. And you know, having a disability really, as Senator said, it's not really the problem. Mm -hmm. It's ability to have choices. It's ability to have options. It's ability to afford things. Mm -hmm. That's where I come in. Yeah. All right. So, um, Marcy, information is power. Sure. Right? Uh, but when you are speaking about the hawkers, because uh, I mean, this is an issue of financial inclusion mm -hmm. as well, right? Yes. Um, so the, there's a quote here, uh, tumeenda kwa governor maramingi na hatuja ha, haja tuskiza. Sasa tunapanga kukamp hapo kwa ofisi yake hadi atusikilize. This is Joel Maingi, chairperson, disabled vendors community, uh, Nairobi County. Uh, but first, information is power. And, and I visited your website, yes. uh, uh, the council's website, and I saw that uh, there's a provision for cash transfer for caregivers. Yeah. Um, I also saw uh, information on assistive devices. So just let, can assist people to know, you know, uh, what, what uh, provisions are available uh, to them. Okay, uh, thank you, Olivia, for that question. I'll start by saying, uh, just before I enter into that question, I will back up what my colleagues and friends are saying here, that uh, unless we're represented, unless the, the political parties are intentional. She talked about the going through the, the campaigns and the challenges. We also have a biggest problem when it comes to the political parties and being intentional in the nomination. And that is why currently the 22 counties that did not have the MCAs with disabilities because of the intersection and how there were loopholes where the um, IBC were being able, someone can be able to navigate without any repercussion in terms of the law. And we ended up with um, lesser representation in most of the counties. I'll speak about the National Council and what the effort you're doing in terms of the, especially the counties, is that uh, we are uh, meeting with the um, COGs, just creating that awareness among them. Because the moment we start with the top, then the implementation and trickling down, so that by the time you're coming to um, Governor Sakaja and talking about the Nairobi County, from the National Council, we have a conversation with the 47 uh, governors on what is the expectation, what is their mandate, how many of these counties are, and I'm glad to say there's some kind of um, a memorandum of um, understanding that have taken uh, place between the National Council and the governors in terms of how they can uh, mainstream disability in every aspect of the council that is mm. ongoing and happening in the as some counties have um, picked it and running with this others are still sitting and observing which we are calling upon them that every county the 47 county they have the voice of persons with disabilities they have meetings and um, people on the ground saying these are our issues depending on the county. When she was talking about the workers and all that, I was thinking about when you talk about the economic empowerment, right? It is as simple as saying the, the provision of the, the, in the Constitution and the Disability Act, when you talk about the 5%, we bring it down to when you're allocating those stores, right? Mm. Do we have stores that are intentional, Correct. accessible, Correct. and they are preserved for the persons with disabilities so that when you're when they are running on the street, we know this is the intentionality that when you're talking about economic um, empowerment and inclusion, it means we are saying these are the resources in the counties. How are we ensuring we allocate some to persons with disabilities, right? Now back to the question about what we are doing is the first thing our mandate is just ensuring the policy, the the, the the Constitution and the Disability Act, connecting and letting people know this is what is supposed to be done, right? Our biggest take, especially in the, the um, public sector, has been mainstreaming disability. Unfortunately, I'm not very proud <laughs> to say yeah. that uh, this year the, the mainstreaming uh, disability was removed in the performance contracts. And the feeling is, when you're taking stock, are we saying that Kenya, we have been able to implement every aspect of disability that now we can say the public sector does not have to 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 
to be doing this and being um, reporting it as a um, as a performance contract? The answer is we say we are taking stock. I'm I'm honest enough to own and say we are not yet there. <coughs> And if there is anything that we need to have in place, not only even in the in the government sector or the public, even in the private and every other aspect, remember we say disability is an aspect within society. It is all about every stakeholder. As from the perspective of being the, the implementing agency, we can push for the awareness, we can push for the policies, but who are the implementers? Mm -hmm. Because Correct. now that's where Correct. it meets the... Uh, rubber meets the road. Mm. Yes, it is. The constitution in Article 54 has clearly said mm -hmm. it, okay? The, the UN Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability, which as a country, we signed and ratified. And uh, Article 4 of the constitution says any international law that we sign, we ratify, it becomes part of the law, mm -hmm. okay? So when it comes to the CRPD, that is the Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability, it's so clear about the accessibility, about the political participation, and all these things that we are saying they are not yet done mm -hmm. but then what is what can the council do engaging the stakeholders which we are doing and uh, right now this year a strategic part of our program for this year is we are having meetings with all the sectors like the ways of fund team and saying what is the percentage that is customized for persons with disabilities okay when you're talking about the the, um, the women fund we are saying, out of this amount, what is the slot for women with disabilities? Correct. So that now our work from the National Council is we are telling our, our members now, the women with disabilities, if you go to the Ways of Fund, if you, uh, if you go to the Women Fund, you can claim it under this. Because unless now, Wanja mentioned about the multiple identity within us. Okay, that I can be thrown out by the fact that uh, um, this is for women, but then women, are they saying whatever is for women, there must be a portion for women with disabilities? The moment we get to that level in terms of what as a society we are doing, um, then the, the practicality of involving women with disabilities will be practical. Lastly, I will talk about the employment. When it's the, the data that you mentioned about uh, women um, either on low payment jobs or they're not even there. I'm so happy that when I go for meetings and many forums, the conference rooms, we are talking about inclusion, gender inclusion, the new song in the, in, in the society. But then the question I keep saying is, and our emphasis and what you're calling out is, when you're saying we have a target of employing 50% um, women, 50% men, can we have data that so shows out of these 50 percent women that we're employing how many women are women with disabilities right when you're talking about we are doing this for men how many men are men with disabilities when you're talking about youth uh, fund or anything about youth we cannot continue talking about youth if youth with disabilities are not on the table making decisions and saying this is the means of youth with disabilities yet we cut across but then in that cutting across let's not the issues of disability be left hanging let's have intentionality on saying Wanja is the voice of youth with disability in this climate uh, uh, um, conference forum that we are having so that we see in the lenses of disability that is the time we not miss on what is bothering what are the gaps that are happening that mm -hmm. is what I would say about it. Uh, Denita, as somebody, as a legislator, yeah, as a policy maker, <laughs> uh, uh, or rather you, you did inform policy, you had occasion to directly engage uh, the executive, yes. uh, to question yes. uh, the executive. <clears throat> how, how, what, how easy a, a time did you have of representing their interests? of persons with uh, disabilities it is not uh, it is not easy it is still not even on the floor of the house it mm. is not uh, easy uh, people think oh mps you know it, 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 you know we, under you know when we're in parliament we put ourselves under kedipa the kenya disability parliamentary association uh, members of parliament with disability but again we had to you know parliament is about numbers you know, for any, 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 any bill to pass, you, you really must marshal the numbers and obviously the political, you know, it is mad with the, you know, mm. who, is, who, is, who, is, who is pushing this bill. 
And so it, 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 it is still not easy on the floor of the house. The political goodwill on disability, you know, we, 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 we try to create that, that political goodwill. Because I remember when I was in parliament, we for the first time, under the SDGs caucus, because we have an SDGs caucus of parliament, uh, that, that uh, we, we actually organize an open day, a disability open day, so that members of parliament can understand what disability is all about. The speaker can understand. The speaker can be on a wheelchair and, 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 and move around. You see how difficult it is to, to, you know, to have a disability uh, and, and, and to move like that. But she, she's talking of the council. And, uh, you know, the council is, 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 is a government body. And, and, and I'm like, I wish this council had an authority to implement. Yeah, true. You know, currently the council does not have, the national council does not have authority to implement. Mm. You know, these good ideas, because we've worked with the, I've worked with the council and so many other partners under what we are calling Saudi Moja. Mm. And we are, uh, as, as, as disability leaders of this country, you know, we, then we're we asking ourselves, how could the council be an implementer? Because we will implement all these things that are lacking in terms of implementation. The gap between policy and implementation is huge. And it is there. And I can tell you, Olive, even within, in terms of employment, and it is a shame that there are counties in this country that do not have the five, they completely have no 5% requirement by law. Look at the CECs, the county executive uh, members, the waziris, the ministers in the counties. You can even find counties that do not even have any waziri with a disability, even one, and they have about 15. CECs, and there's no CEC with a disability there. Persons with disabilities are only thrown into boards, you know. You're just a board member of uh, some hospital. <laughs> You're a board member of some, you know, small, small. Do you want to tell me that there are no qualified, educated persons with disabilities in that county that can be employed? It is a very big shame. And that's why I'm telling you, we have no shortage of laws. We have no shortage of laws. We have laws. Mm -hmm. But now that will, to, why difficult to, 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 to quickly implement, for example, the Persons with Disabilities Act in our parliament? You know, they're just seated in there, they're just on paper, seated there. So we want, we want to see how do we engage, even when uh, the council as, as, as the lead disability, you know, government <laughs> body. That's why, uh, that's why I am calling for the council and many other disability partners to actually collaborate. The moment we collaborate like that, it becomes a little easier for, for, for multiple voices to be heard. You know, you know we as disabled people, mm -hmm. we will continue to make noise. <laughs> we will make noise. Because if, if, if our rights are not, uh, are, are not, are not uh, honored, like any other people's rights, we will continue to make noise in this country. And you know, there's nothing as bad as just keep you know, making noise. We will make noise as disabled people. <laughs> and, and this is not nice. In Nairobi, in Nairobi County here, where we are, city county, the, the, the hawkers that we are talking about here. And that's what we, are, we, we, we were saying. Right now, the county, as it seeks to, you know, to, 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 to take them to, you know, to market centers in Umoja, I think they have done some, they're trying to put some market near Umoja there, Caltex, somewhere there. There is a space that they said they have, or even Mudurwa or wherever. How can persons with disabilities be prioritized? Because you see, they can say, okay, we have a market in Umoja, where everybody who is doing their wares and trading will go. But this person with disability, in those stalls, where will they be placed? Uko nyuma ama where? Because you see now, when will a person with disability be seen with his wares that he's selling? So we want to see those, those deliberate attempts to say our first priority first in our location of these stalls are for disabled Nairobians who are trading. So that you, you can say, and they should not even take them to Moja and take them behind, <laughs> you know, those stalls who are, which are behind, just simply because now we have disabled people we have given, they should be seen up here, so that when you are going uh, uh, to buy something, you are seeing a stall of a disabled person here, in front here. You know, there is that discrimination that happens in a very intelligent way, <laughs> that, oh, work or two, so you just throw them there. And my, 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 my colleague just talked about issues of uh, women with disabilities. You see, if the government itself is not intentional in anything that if it is constituting this board and this committee to say now we want to put w women with disabilities if the multi, uh, multi uh, 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 stakeholder forum is not constitute does not you know um, uh, constitute a disabled woman what are we talking about and you're going to talk about disabled issues you know it is such a shame 
that you can go and sit there and you are now listening to persons with disability and in your board the committee uh, you don't have one how do you go back to the office mm -hmm. and you, you, you know you, you must be mad <laughs> don't you think so how do you now go there and start writing you're now writing a report of those people you know they call us those people those uh -huh. people wale us ndio mavu you know those people who are after those now that's how we are called but now we want to push we want to push when the two thirds agenda came on the floor of the house when i was serving in parliament two thirds debate i remember i brought a, a legislative uh, amendment to say we are proposing yes to increase women to parliament so that we are constitutional mm. and i remember my, my 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 amendment was to seek at least five percent of these women who will be coming into parliament to be women with disabilities yeah varied disabilities they, they, you know we the, our, multi, uh, our our diversity is now we are talking about here so unless we are intentional and i remember a, a member of parliament at that time and that was a lady she told me, no, Moshimo Denita, you are now bringing another aspect of, uh, of, of this thing. You are it will derail us. Let us just say women. We cannot say women. Yes. We are not a homogeneous mm. group, Olive, mm. in this country. The life that we have, in the life that I have lived as a disabled member, or a disabled human being, or a disabled woman, we are not a homogeneous group as women in this country. And that's why now we're saying, how can we be intentional? Even within the two-thirds gender, what is the percentage of women with disabilities who are coming there? Yeah. And what is their representation in terms of regional? One to Atoke Coast, another one comes from Nyanza, another one comes from Rift Valley, another one comes from Turka. You know, you know what I'm talking about? So those deliberate efforts is what is missing. And when people are saying it, oh, now this is something for women. Oh, no, don't bring that aspect of women with disabilities. Don't bring that aspect of women, you know, single women or whatever. Those are the diversities we are talking about, the intersectionality. Mm -hmm. We must be very intentional. Then they say, uh, uh, no, we, no, we are going in as women. And that was all my, a woman MP telling me, Moshmiya, don't bring that amendment. We are going in as women. You, with the moment you bring that amendment, you are going to derail the whole process. <laughs> the men are going to overtake us. You can imagine, it is a shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you have to fight in parliament is not easy mm. so i brought that amendment and it completely stopped when we had the corona time when we had corona i you know they had constituted a committee a national task force on corona in parliament and i can tell you there was no disability representation and that i brought in an amendment and a question and i said no and that's the reason why in parliament we never constituted a, 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 a corona national stakeholder committee of members of parliament to oversee because are you seeing now this discrimination does not only just happen who could and even at the highest uh, levels mm -hmm. in yeah. parliament there's a lot of dis discrimination on disability so we have a lot of work to do and that's why i'm telling you olive we as persons with disabilities of kenya will continue to make noise yeah. we'll make noise and we'll make yeah. that loud noise yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for inclusion in because okay. okay. of time in 30 seconds in 30 each, seconds your last think, word yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, although the conversation has not ended i feel like there's a lot to be canvassed that we cannot possibly cover it yeah. in an hour yeah. uh, so i will allocate more time yeah. i'll make thank yeah. you Elif. i know you've given me 30 seconds but i'll take one minute because you're <laughs> good so i'll just start by talking about children later today i'll be attending a unicef event and they're talking about discrimination of children so let children with disabilities be given an equal chance the right to play their job is not to hold the bags of others as they are playing let the toilets is the nation has done a good report here be made accessible uh, so that is my first thing the other issue would be let us change our culture and our attitudes we've had funny funny proverbs and even how in our local dialects we refer to people with disabilities we should change our culture most importantly, I just want to talk about the cost of living. That is one of the reservations I have with the NADCO report. Even as we presented our own memo to the NADCO committee, while some of the aspects of the report are good, issues of cost of living have not been fully addressed. The people who are mostly affected are people who can't afford. These include people with disabilities. There is funny, funny recommendations about the issue of multi-party democracy. The more the multi-party space shrinks, the less likely people with disabilities will participate because special in interest groups are more empowered uh, politically when we have a larger <coughs> multi-party space most importantly i just want to call out the government in this financial year that we have the one that was contested and people made a lot of noise now that we are making noise mm. the budget for <laughs> people with disabilities and the budget for cash transfer and the budget for money of orphans and vulnerable children was reduced it has never been heard of in anywhere in, in the in the world that money for social protection has been reduced actually here are the figures the money in this financial year 
is 38.2 billion. In the other financial year, it was 39.50. So basically what they did is that they said, you're vulnerable, people continue being vulnerable, mm -hmm. but your cash cautioning has been reduced. That is actually a shame. We need to make noise. All right. So mm -hmm. I will have to stop you there. Thank to you. Allow Marcy at yeah. least some 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay. I thank you, Riva, for this moment. Uh, first thing, I'll start with the good news to persons with disability in the country. That's um, uh, following what the His Excellency um, Pres President Ruto um, agenda about digitalization. For the National Council last week, we launched the I saw ECSN. that, yes. yes. So the registration of persons with disabilities has become very easy. And because we were intentional on this, because we're taking care of our people in the grassroots, the, the, the way they are to use um, an accessible means of transport coming to Nairobi or our counties. So now the process is easier and more accessible of what um, persons with disability need to do is um, you go for the assessment, then once you have all your documentation on the e-citizen, you're able to upload them and then a shorter period of time in verification and then you're able to get your certificates. So that is the good news that I'm, I want to emphasize and remind uh, persons with disability in the country, we're still thinking about them and the intention of the National Council, right. our, sometimes our hands are limited as she's saying but once we have the 2023 disability bill that i'm hopeful that the registration will ensure it goes through then uh, the national council is able now to be more as with a bigger mandate and able to implement more um for persons with disabilities, disabilities. all right <laughs> i am time but but like I said, we will be deliberate about continuing this conversation. Uh, issues of inclusivity. Uh, my name is Olive Burrows. I just want to thank uh, my panelists this morning. Uh, Wanja Maina, uh, NEC member, uh, Jubilee Party. I want to thank you, Masi Mugure, uh, board member, uh, National Council for Persons with uh, Disabilities. And I want to thank you, <laughs> Honorable uh, Denita Gatti. And she is former member of parliament, uh, Persons with Disabilities, and also chair, former chair, Commonwealth. Uh, Parliamentarian. Parliamentarian, yes, <laughs> persons with disabilities. Uh, well, that's it for AM Live this morning, but coming up is your world. I'm sitting in for Winnie Lubembe, and we're discussing matters insurance. <laughs> On the <laughs> other side. <laughs> Thank you.